Sean, thanks so much for taking some time to join us. We appreciate your time. I know you're super busy getting the uh, Saratoga worry. special out every day, which is a full-time job in and of itself. Our fans love steeplechasing at Saratoga. It's one of the most exciting and, and thrilling events that happens, and uh, fans and viewers get to see it every Wednesday. Now, can you help us unbridle some of the secrets and things that go on behind the scenes in steeplechasing and maybe help our viewers uh, learn how to handicap and, in fact, enjoy these races better? Yeah, I mean, the one thing about steeplechasing, uh, some people think they're a different breed of horse. They're, they are thoroughbred horses. These are the same horses that ran on the flat. People bet on them on the flat, and they bet on them over jumps. I mean, these are the exact same horses. We're at Tom Voss's barn. He's a, he has an operation that he uses steeplechasing almost as a business model where he, he combines flat racing and jump racing. He'll have a horse that'll run on the flat. Eventually, if the horse isn't going on and be a good horse or a stake horse on the flat, he switches them, to, switches them to jumps. A lot of times, they've been jumping their whole lives. He teaches them to jump, but he, he might, if he has them as a two-year-old or three-year-old, they're probably learning how to jump on the farm. They've jumping logs and sort of playing. So, when the time comes to make them jumpers, they're ready to go on and do so. Um, and he's done that with countless horses. He comes to Saratoga with a big string roughly probably half and half jumpers and flat horses. He wins both on the flat and jumps. Um, this horse, this horse name is Brave Intent and he looks like a jumper right now and uh, he has not run over jumps yet but you can sort of look at him. He's a big, big sort of brawny gelding that uh, you know will run on the flat for maybe run through a condition or two on the flat and then probably run over jumps. Uh, he's done it with John's Call, with Dreadnought, those kind of horses. He's a friendly fellow too. He's very friendly. <laughs> Look at this horse. This horse has got a big old head on him. He, uh, his name's Desert Swing. And again, I think he's a flat horse that hasn't run over jumps. He's just a big, beautiful horse. Looks like, he looks like he'd go, go forever. Uh, and he looks like he could jump fences. He's just got a great shoulder, big old long neck, great looking head. It's a beautiful horse. And Tom's horses will be more in this sort of style of horses. Most of them will look a little like this. This horse named Big Brush, he's a horse by Broad Brush, and uh, he's probably he's probably eight or nine years old. He ran on the flat. They made him a jumper. He uh, he's won. I think he won four races. He won the most races of any horse. I think two or three years ago. I think he actually won five in the season. And uh, he's gotten hurt a few times. Tom Voss's farm in Maryland. They kick the horses out, they'll live outside, rough it for a year, come back in and, and be ready to go again. Uh, this horse had a prep the other day at the open house and he'll run, he'll run at this meet over jumps. And again, he's a big, beautiful horse. You see, he's, he's just got a great, great head and eye, great shoulder, big old strong back. <laughs> hey, bud. Now I have to ask you, because I'm from a show jumping background and I've competed in Grand Prix and I like having my legs down around a horse's side. So I've always wanted to ask, how do you get to those jumps and stay on with your stirrups all the I way up know. here? I mean, it's very, I mean, it's my background. I mean, that's basically, I learned how to jump, jump in hurdles at sort of racing speed. I mean, I rode races. I'm an exception. Most of these guys have ridden races as kids and learned how to do it. but. I, I pretty much uh, I pretty much learned how to ride while riding races. Learn how to jump a fence. I mean, I, I couldn't I could barely jog an X rail, and I was riding over jumps at racing speeds. So it was very natural to me. But we see strides. I mean, we are count we're not counting. I mean, we're not going five, four, three, two. But but we're seeing strides, and you're trying to get to a short one or a medium one or a long one. I mean, we definitely see strides and try to ride to those spots where like a show jump riders going and they're very deliberate trying to get to the right spot. So are we. It's just going really fast. <laughs> well, not only is it going fast, it's the aspect of your yeah. stirrups being so right. How But do see, you, you can use you, a lot of leg. I mean, we play, use your leg. Your, your balance. It looks like you're know. just up there. You got to help unbridle that. I don't really one. know, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's so natural. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's, it's just naturally. I mean, do you ever feel you, like you're kind of top heavy? Oh, or like sure. I mean, a lot of times, and, sure. Yeah, it depends how they jump. I mean, at night, when they jump right, it's like sitting in a couch. I mean, it's easy. Well, sure. It's, it's like a easy. Rolls Right. And when they jump wrong, then, uh, then there's a lot of things you're doing. I mean, we let our rain slide and we try to balance. I mean, they grab mane for sure. Have a, we usually have a yoke. You'll see a, a yoke or a breastplate where you have a strap. Put your finger in that. That'll give you a little, little balance. Um, 
and there's a lot of grip with your uh, with your calves and your ankles and you know heels down and you'll see on your legs right in there it's not wrapped around like your background but it's very much I mean it's real tight in there to sort of try to balance them and we use it I mean you can bounce we can move horses around and balance them it's just yeah it's just different it's so fast that you don't have it's just it's very much like a show jumping it's like moved up it's like an acceleration of any jumping exercise like like a hundred times faster so you're doing the same skills just really quick all right so now I that we know what's That's, going on yeah. maybe you can help our viewers with some of these horses yeah, so we'll look and they see get who's a up here for, uh, who's out there and maybe they could place a bet on one of them or at least feel a little yeah, bit I mean, the more one, familiar see tom boss the cat's out the cat's out of the bag anymore as a jumping person we used to come up here and bet on tom boss's horses all the time on the flat they could run on the jumps and uh, then he'd run them on the flat, and they were great prices. And uh, unfortunately for us, the public sort of caught on that he was very good at this. So I'm not sure we'll cash any bets now. But um, this is a horse named Lair. I actually don't know this horse. But again, he's a big, beautiful horse. Probably run over jumps one day. I'm, I, you know, probably run on the flat here at the meet. And then, and then maybe jump. Now this one looks tiny compared to yeah, the group we've Yeah, this is a Philia, Miss Viva. So that's a filly. She's probably more of a more of a flat horse than a uh, than a steeplechase horse. But he, you know, Voss is one of the rare. He, well, Jonathan Shepard does it as well. But they um, he combines. I mean, again, you he has a he has a strong flat string. Uh, horses like Dreadnought, and and he has a filly named Rowdy, who's a nice filly. Was second in the Maryland Million Turf last year. So he's got a good combination of both. This is a jumper here. His name's Jazz It Up George. He'll run at the meet. He looks like he's having a rest. He's resting. <laughs> oh, here's somebody looking for some attention. Now, who's this? Oh, this is Gryffindor. Gryffindor. It's a New York bred that uh, he's only run on the flat as well. Um, and Tom Voss is one of those guys that he'll he he'll get horses. A lot of a lot of flat owners will send him horses. I have this horse. He's been run on the grass. You know, he might need a change. You know, see what you think. See if you know, he'll make a jumper. I think this horse. He has not run over jumps, and he's run, only run on the flat. And he's done quite, he's done okay. He's won, won a couple of New York bred races on the turf, but he he'll have horses like that where guys say, "Ah, see what you think." Maybe they'll be jumpers. Maybe they won't. You know, they can they'll still run on the flat, or or they'll run over jumps. I mean, people get confused sometimes. People think that if a horse is running over jumps, then they can't run on the flat. Well. You know, if there's a jump in the way, they'll jump it. And if there's, if it's a flat race, they're going to run, you know, a flat race. So there, that's, this is a good horse. This horse's name, and an offer you can't refuse. He won the stake up here. He won the AP Smithwick um, maybe two years ago. He's a front runner. He's uh, owned and bred by Fox Ridge Farm that you'll see owns, um, uh, owns horse of Pat Kelly. I mean, they have a serious flat stable. And what they'll do is they'll have horses that maybe aren't aren't going to be good horses on the flat, and they'll switch them to Tom Boss, send them to Tom Boss, and they'll run over jumps. Um, they own Risk Averse, a good turf mare, and they'll they'll constantly send horses to Tom to sort of just see to try to change, give them something else to do, and they've done quite well. They've had horses that you know have made some money doing it, and and as flat horses they were going nowhere. As jumpers, they got a second chance, sort of a you know to to. Tr to be viable and uh, this horse for example if he didn't you know if he wasn't gonna he wasn't he wasn't making it on the flat I mean he was a very average or poor flat horse so they switch him to switch him over jumps and he wins a stake at Saratoga so being a former winner of the AP Smithwick can we expect to see him in it this I year I think he'll August run 8th? yeah I think he'll run he should run in the race he he, he ran in the uh, he had come he's come back from an injury he, he had about a year off he ran in a stake at Colonial Downs, and uh, might have needed that one. And, hit, and I'm sure, well, I'm pretty sure he'd run in the in the AP Smithwick. He's quite interested in the yeah, camera. He seems to like to have his picture taken. But see, I, you can look, I, you can see their their heads. They're like this horse has got a jumper head. They just got these big old, you know, like great eyes, and they're taking it all in, and they're sort of. Hey, well, bud. they seem to have a lot more bone to them. Yeah, they're just bigger, stronger very, type very horses. Solid. Now this horse, this is a neat horse. This horse is named Dreadnought. He was purchased as a as a yearling, with steeplechasing in mind. Um, and you know his owner, Douglas Joyce, the same owner, the same man that owns John's Call. 
And so they looked for a big sort of typey looking horse that, that would, you know, would take time. They, they're not in any hurry. They're not looking for two year olds. And um, he ran a little bit on the flat, did okay. They ran him over jumps a couple times. He didn't break his maiden over jumps. He was second. I actually bet on him in the day at Fair Hill. He was second, got beat a nose. And uh, so Tom Voss decided to, to run him back on the flat. They started, they ran him in an allowance race up here. He ran very well. Uh, he went through his allowance conditions. This was just last year. And uh, he, uh, he ended up winning two stakes late in the year, won a grade two stakes at uh, Calder to finish off the year. He's a, now he's a, you know, he's, a, he's a pretty serious turf horse. And he, he couldn't break his maiden over jumps. He ran over jumps in May of last year and he won a grade two stakes in December of last year. So yeah, he's a fascinating story and he's the type of horse again, you know, he, he, he it wasn't, you know, they tried to make him a jumper. He just, he was okay at it and he was, he would have been fine. He maybe wasn't going to go on and be a great horse, but then they switched him back to, to the flat and he started doing great at it. So, you know, really good. And um, so you know, it, it's sort of a neat story. Again, he's a big, beautiful horse. Um, I think he cost four thousand dollars as a yearling, and uh, you know, there's a horse that you know a flat person is going to look at him and say, "Wow, he's too big." He's and, and they're right. He's probably not going to hold up galloping on the dirt, trying to make him a two-year-old, really pounding on him early. But if you have time, he'll come. You know, he's a perfect example. He came around. He's by Laquimet, who's sort of a more of a, a, a distance-type sire. You know, and he got really good at four or five years old. If you have time, boy, he's you know he's a perfect example of what it can do for you. And he'll run in a, I mean, I think he'll run in a, he'll run in a stake here at Saratoga on the turf, and uh, you know he, he's he'll, he'll he should run pretty well. Well, Sean Clancy sure is in the know when it comes to thoroughbreds competing over jumps. In addition to publishing the Saratoga Special, Clancy is the co-founder and publisher of the Steeplechase Times and Saratoga Days. He is an accomplished steeplechase jockey winning hundreds of races over the jumps, including the 1998 Turf Riders Handicap right here at Saratoga. Not all of the thoroughbreds that we've met today will go on to be great racehorses like John's Call, but that doesn't mean that they're not wonderful friends and companions, and they're useful in many other disciplines. I grew up riding show jumpers, and at that time most of them were thoroughbreds. Today they've been replaced by the warm blood in the show ring, and that's displaced a lot of thoroughbreds. If you're looking for a horse that could be useful in multiple disciplines, reach out to one of your local thoroughbred organizations and find a horse to love for a lifetime.